everyone. My name is Maria Desmondi, and I am from Cardinal Rule Press. Oh, I've got a friend who's going to join us today. I just noticed that. Sorry about that. Um, today is such an exciting day because we are here with Shannon Anderson to read her very new book. So new that it arrived on our doorstep today. I just opened up the box about 20 minutes ago. This beautiful, beautiful book that is in the world now. So Shannon, welcome. Thank you. Excited to be here. Oh, we're so happy. And I do want to say we are recording, but we will not have anyone's photos recorded in the recording. Um, we do ask you to mute yourself and just a little bit of housekeeping. If you have any questions, I will be managing the chat and we would love questions after Shannon's all done telling us a little bit about the inspiration and the journey and reading the book, we will do a QA. and a All right. So Shannon, I'm going to hand it over to you and I'm going to unpin myself. Great. Okay. Um, so I will start here with, oh, it didn't save it in the background for me. Like we had practiced. <laughs> so let's see. Okay. Oh, thank you, Jonathan, tuning in from New Alm. If you would like to tell us where you are tuning in from in the chat, that would be fantastic. I am tuning in from Michigan. Okay. Are you all seeing this mess right here or are you? <laughs> we are not seeing anything, so don't you worry. Okay, good, good. <laughs> All right, so California, Connecticut, Virginia, Indiana, Illinois. Are you now seeing my screen? Maine. We are seeing it now. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. And just a little housekeeping here, getting it all. <laughs> straightened out. Okay. Are we ready to start? Let's do it. Yes. Great. Well, here is Do It Yourself Dollhouse. I'm so excited to get to share this with you. Um, to let you know a little bit of the inspiration behind this book, this is something that is a little bit about my own childhood because when I was growing up, I well, my family didn't have very much. And so my mom used to sew a lot of my clothes and we used to um, do all kinds of things, just being resourceful so that we wouldn't have to go out and buy something. We could just make it or we could fix things or we could repurpose things. We did it a lot. And so one of the things that I love to do is create some kind of dollhouse. And I lived on this street and down the street diagonal for me is one of my best friends that I grew up with. And she grew up in a home where they had a lot more money and she had the like dream dollhouse, like a really fancy dollhouse. Everything came with it. And like everything was painted on the walls already, you know, little bookcases and TVs. And it came with the plastic furniture to put in the rooms. And I remember always thinking that her dollhouse was super fancy. But when she used to come to my house, she always thought my dollhouse was more fancy and more fun because there were things to do. Like we were creating, we were using our imagination. We were finding things that we could make into furniture or little food items. And it was a lot of fun. And so I wanted to write a story about that to share that sometimes the fancy and the store-bought, that's not really the most exciting, fun, fancy thing. Sometimes it's when we create something all our own. And so this kind of makes it a STEM book. If you've ever done makerspace things, being able to create a diorama or a, a dollhouse or a hero headquarters or whatever that may be, um, that's what this is all about, getting to do things like that. So I'm going to um, stop sharing so that I can read the book to you. And then I have a few other things to share after that. So here we are, Do It Yourself Dollhouse. I was sharing with Maria right before all of you joined to say that um, I just moved like literally over the weekend and then went to Texas to present, got back at one in the morning on Thursday, went and taught my college class. And here I am today. So I quickly put together a Zoom background. <laughs> 
And it's not like my normal background, but I just kind of threw some books up there so you could have something fun to look at. Um, but here is Do It Yourself Dollhouse, which arrived while I was in Texas. I was so thankful it didn't rain, so my boxes didn't get wet. <laughs> and um, and I actually dedicated this book to my mom because, as I said, to my mom, who has forever taught me to be creative and resourceful. And so here we go. On the first day of summer, Charlie's mom surprised her with the dollhouse of her dreams. It had perfectly painted walls and perfect plastic furniture. Charlie set the bed in the bedroom and the couch in the living room. Everything is exactly where it was supposed to be. Down the street, Charlie's friend Lucy decided to build a house for her doll, Molly. Look at these cool paintings, Molly. So she's making her dollhouse out of boxes, and these paintings are stickers that she's using. She looked through the recycling and the Someday Maybe box, a special container filled with odds and ends that she and her mom couldn't recycle but didn't want to throw away. I could make this into a desk. So it's kind of like a, a soap box. And this cap will make a perfect stool. Charlie, Set Sophie in the kitchen. Enjoy your hamburger. Enjoy the show, Sophie. She sat Sophie on the couch. Good night, Sophie. She sat Sophie on the bed. And then she set herself down. She wasn't sure what to do next. She's kind of bored there. Lucy served Molly a piece of spaghetti in an old lid. And that's what I used to do. I would take one stick of spaghetti and break it up and put it in a little bowl so it looked like um, my doll was having some spaghetti. She turned scraps from her dress her mom was making into a blanket, an empty spool into a nightstand, and bits of cardboard and paper into books. Have fun reading. So she fed her dinner and then she gets to read. After a while, she slid Molly into a sleeping bag. Look at that, she's in an old sock. It's a perfect sleeping bag. She began to sketch. Rest up, I have big ideas for tomorrow. So she's planning and imagining what else she can add to her dollhouse. The next day, Charlie serves so Sophie another hamburger, set her in front of another movie, and then went looking for something else to play. Now, the reason she's having a hamburger again is because in Sophie's dollhouse, the furniture came with things already painted on there. So this placemat and the hamburger is painted on the table. So that's what she's stuck with eating every day. She took out her painting kit and added a few strokes. She rode around the garage in her motorized Jeep, and eventually she grew bored. Meanwhile, Lucy hunted for treasure. The cotton in these boxes will make great pillows. This can be a bathtub, and this can be a laundry basket. Charlie watched TV until the tree outside started to shake. Lucy, she called, what are you doing? Lucy called back. Hi, Charlie. I'm finding things for the dollhouse I'm working on. What do you mean finding things? Didn't it come with everything you need? I'm making it up. That's weird, Charlie thought. My doll's house has instructions. Do you want to see it? Inside, Lucy's eyes grew wide. Wow, that's fancy. You must have so much fun. Well, actually, Charlie explained, it's kind of boring. Lucy suggested they make Sophie dinner. What does she like? Hamburgers, said Charlie. That's what's on the table. Hmm, we could cover the burger with a tablecloth and cook something else. She'll get sick of eating the same old thing. Charlie wasn't so sure. Lucy was. These acorn tops could be bowls and your thimble could be a cup. I found these seeds outside. What do you think they could be? I, I don't know, said Charlie, and then an idea sprouted. Cereal, said Charlie, or soup. All afternoon, Charlie hunted for treasure and built. She glued popsicle sticks in the kitchen to make hardwood flooring and gift wrapped on the walls for wallpaper. We don't need these anymore, Charlie said, piling up the old furniture. Don't throw them out, Lucy cried. You could start a someday maybe box. 
they raced to Lucy's house. So the someday maybe box is a box kind of like I used to have where I would put things that maybe eventually I could make into something. Like, you know how sometimes when you order pizza and there's that little plastic round thing with legs on it that keeps the pizza box from going down on the cheese and making it stick? Well, I used to take that little white thing and make it into a table for my dollhouse. Charlie admired the treasures and then she saw Lucy's dollhouse. So now Charlie is seeing the homemade dollhouse out of boxes. Wow, that's fancy. Thanks, said Lucy. Can you help me with something? So see, she has her boxes like this now, but then she decides, you know what? I want it to be a three-story house. So she arranged it like this. They rearranged the boxes. With three stories, Molly would definitely need an elevator. So now they're inventing an elevator with a pulley system. That's pretty cool. That night, Charlie made Sophie a new softer bed and then tucked her into it. After reading Sophie bedtime story, she said, rest up, I have big ideas for tomorrow. And she began to sketch. So instead of the plastic hard bed that came with the dollhouse, she has her on a sponge now and some fabric that she cut to use for a bedspread. The next morning, Charlie invited Lucy over. They were getting started on an oven when, Charlie, what is your dad doing? Huh? Oh, we got a new washer and dryer, so he's hauling the boxes out to the, oh my goodness, Charlie and Lucy say together, are you thinking what I'm thinking? What do you think he's going to do with those boxes? This is going to be so much fun. So can you imagine having huge boxes like, like Ooh, let's just hold on a second. It looks like we might be having a little technical difficulty. Just give it a second here. And while Shannon is paused with such a beautiful smile on her face, um, why don't we go ahead and I know there are several classrooms who are logged in here. Why don't we go ahead and turn to the chat and come up with some good questions for Shannon as she figures out coming back to us. Let's go ahead and add a few questions that she can answer in our Q&A. Um, I know that because she just moved, they did not hook up her internet yet, so she was on a hot spot. So um, just bear with us, please. Any questions you have? I believe she's going to pop right back in, so no worries. There she is. Awesome. Okay. There you go. Um, there, there you go. go. I'm going to go back to sharing because I have a couple of other things that I want to share. And so can you all see this? Sure can. Okay, great. All right. So here we go. All right. So I wanted to just show. I'm going to. Oh, you're cutting out a little bit, Shannon, but I believe what she wants to do is share the book trailer with you. Okay, we're spinning. So I'm going to, if we have time, come back to that. Okay. So I was hoping I to show you it. on I this one. It it... Okay. Do you have this video as well? I don't have it on my computer, but um, I bet you could email it to me real quick and we can make it happen. Okay, I just wanna pause a second. So this is something super cool that I got to do. I got to go on a field trip to the printing press where the book actually was printed. So um, I asked Maria if we could arrange for me to come to Michigan to get to see my book come off the press. And I was so excited to get to watch this. So what you're going to see is, hold on, I'm trying to, here we go. 
what you're going to see is him explaining how the book is printed. And so just a little bit, because it's kind of noisy because you can hear the machines in the background. He's talking about how the paper, which are these huge rolls of paper, these aren't just individual pieces of paper. So the paper is on these rolls and it goes up into this machine and they print one side of the paper, which I have some of them here. So it's on this big roll and it's printed like this and it goes down and it goes into a dryer to dry that side of the paper so it doesn't smear. And then it goes back up into the machine and the other side is printed and then it goes back in the dryer to dry that side. And then it goes back out and it does like color correction and all kinds of things before it goes off into the rollers where it releases the static and then ends up becoming um coming off of the press there. So um, that is what he's going to be explaining. Alignment and quality. How the light system that helps it stand in the so it is hard to hear what he's saying, but I think um, Shannon was able to explain it quite well for you. Yeah. And so who would have ever thought that, you know, when we print something at school, we print off a single sheet, it goes to a little machine and pops out. But to print a book, it is this big process and lots of big, expensive machines. So this is what it looked like when it was coming off of the end of that press and I got to actually see it. So that was pretty cool. And that's me holding uh, one of the covers before it was made into the actual cover on the book. Now, I wanted to share with you that there are all kinds of cool resources for you. You can either get them on my website or you can look at Cardinal Row Press for additional resources. But there are coloring pages, which are a lot of fun. And there's a whole reader's guide that has been created that has different activities and things that you can do with the book. But I also wanted to show you and hopefully encourage you, challenge you to make your own. It would be so cool to see some of you making some of these dollhouses as a STEM project. And it doesn't have to be necessarily a dollhouse. It can be something that you make into different rooms, stores, shops. You can make hero headquarters. You can make a Mario Kart world. There are so many different things that you could make out of boxes and it is so much fun to make them too. And so um, 